So we are now currently walking to the oldest street here in the Philippines. Let's go! Go, let's go! Ooh. Oh look, there's a deep We have absolutely no idea where to walk. Which one is it? Is it Cebu or Cebu? Quickly, three, two, one. <laughs> that wasn't even enough time to cross. So we are currently in Cebu, the Philippines' oldest city. And today we're going to start this vlog in true Filipino style. So, welcome, welcome to, to the vlog! Now we're going to go and explore the oldest street here in the Philippines. But before we go and explore that street, we've come here. So our first stop here in Cebu City is Magallan's Cross. Now Magallan came here in 1521 while he was busy exploring the world looking for spices. Now Magallan introduced Christianity to the chief and his warriors and they were all baptized. And in order to signify the birth of Christianity here in Cebu, Magallan gave the chief a wooden cross. So let's go check out this cross. Wow, it's so nice in here. Like they have paintings on the roof and I'm not sure actually when the paintings on the roof are painted. But it's quite nice. Inside here it's giving like the surreal feeling. It's really, really well preserved. So it looks like there is actually like a stone wall around this cross in order to protect it with gates. So I'm sure that they lock this area up at certain times, maybe in the evenings, but I don't think this was always here. I think it's more of a recent thing. So the cross that we are looking at is not the original cross that was placed here. This was replaced in the 1700s as originally people were taking the original cross and pieces from it as they believe that it had spiritual powers. So the original cross has been stored away, but there are some rumors that that cross no longer exists. So you can see there's actually candles down here on the table. Now what these candles are here for is apparently people say a prayer and then they put the candle down as an offering for their prayer. You can actually see the amount of candles that people have put down here, right next to the cross. Uh, temperature long yeah, but temperature chink. Wow, look at this building. We need a cross to get there, but there's no zebra crossing. So I think we just wait for the robot and then we cross. <laughs> you don't know what a robot is, it's this. <laughs> uh, sorry, us South Africans call it a robot, but it's a traffic light. <laughs> okay, it's red. Oh, okay, there's a green man. Um, You'll just do as the locals do. <laughs> yeah, just just walk with the locals, then you know you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Made it. <laughs> so we wanted to go to the Basilica Minore del Santo Nino de Cebu. I hope I've said that right. But that is the oldest church here. But there's actually a mass going on. And it's quite crazy to think that the oldest church in the Philippines is still active today. So we'll head back there later. Right now we have come to check out a fort. Now the fort that we've come to, which is right behind me, is called Fort San Pedro. Now this is the oldest fort in the Philippines. Now what makes this fort particularly interesting is that it was only part of one battle to my understanding. Otherwise it was built in 1565 where Miguel Lopez de Legazpi was here in Cebu and built this in order to defend any invaders entering Cebu. Another interesting thing about this fort is actually its shape. It's not a rectangle or a square as normal forts would be or as one would picture. It's actually shaped like a triangle. We have to cross another road. At least this one's not too busy. Okay, uh, quickly, quickly. Quickly. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it looks like they're setting up for a wedding. That is so special. So we've come here to the top of the fort so we don't disturb the wedding. <laughs> Excuse the music in the background if you do hear it. But we're really not expecting to come to a tourist destination and there would be a wedding going on. <laughs> to think that you can actually have a wedding in here is pretty cool. <laughs> it is cool. So over here you can get a good look at how it's shaped like a triangle. Here's one point of the triangle. There's another point down there and another point down here. Now the reason why this fort was built in a triangle and I'll show you that from above is because there's actually sea on two sides of the fort. So if there were any enemies busy coming in here they could at least defend it. Now they did have 14 cannons over here. Um, you can actually see a few of them right around us just to protect. 
So if you actually see down there, you can see there's a port. So that means the sea is facing this way over here. And to my left, there is a cannon. And to the right is a cannon. So that means this wall and this wall is the walls that have the cannons. So what's actually cool about these cannons is these are the actual original cannons. So this one that I'm touching right now is like 500 years old. How cool is that? Okay, touch. I'll touch the two now. <laughs> and once again, we are sitting on a fort wall. How cool is this? <laughs> In the middle of a thriving city. And now what's interesting about this wall is that the stone wall was built in the 1700s. Now originally this fort was actually made out of wood. So to think that we're sitting on something that was built 300 years ago, it's sometimes mind-boggling. Hello! <laughs> Check everyone's starting to pose now and I can't get closer. <laughs> Looks like everyone's dancing on the grass. <laughs> everyone's busy with their TikToks. <laughs> Do you think this is the original doors? I don't know. Does it open? I don't know. I doubt so. They look like they've been redone or there's just a hole in there. Quite heavy. Now I think some renovations have been done to this fort over time but the fact that it still mainly remains a fort that was built 300 years ago. It's really cool. Really cool. Now for some reason I thought when coming to the Philippines we were just gonna go to beaches and islands but what we experienced in Manila in what we saw in the Intramuros we're actually quite impressed with what Cebu has to offer as well. There is so much history. I didn't realize there was so much history, but I think that's why I love to travel so much, yeah. is that you learn all of these new and fascinating things. Quickly, three, two, one. Whoa. That wasn't even enough time to cross. That man was literally green for about seven seconds. <laughs> that does not count. You have to have speed. Cheesh. <laughs> There's a deep room. How cool is that? <laughs> Hi. Hi guys. <laughs> So far I've only seen jeepneys in Manila. And the other jeepneys we see are quite a smaller box shaped one. Seems like a newer version. I think there's one literally right here by us. Face mask proper. Where are you from? South Africa. Thank you. <laughs> So the mass has finally ended and we are finally here inside the church. Now to my understanding this church has been burnt down once or twice and been slightly destroyed but it has been rebuilt and my goodness it is gorgeous. So this church was built on the original site where the original image of the Holy Child was found during 1565 during the expedition of Miguel Lopez de la Gaspi. Now the Holy Child was actually a gift from McGulligan to the chief and apparently this went missing for some time and then it was found again right here a couple of years later. Right now next to the church we're standing in this beautiful little courtyard but they actually have a mass inside and then before as we saw a huge place for a mass to take outside. The mass was actually so big that some people were even standing outside to pray. So you can just see the age of this church by just looking at the walls on the outside. We would love to show you more of the inside, but there are so many people here to pray, so we don't want to disrespect them and go inside and try and film. But it is absolutely beautiful in there. So we are now currently walking to the oldest street here in the Philippines. Now this street is apparently almost 500 years old and the street's name is called Colon Street. Now how it got its name is actually because of Cristobal Colon which is more widely known as Christopher Columbus. So this street was built during the Spanish colonial period and it was the hub of all shopping and business activities. Now the reason why people say this is not the oldest street here in the Philippines is because there were streets before but it depends what you differentiate as a street. Now the reason why this one is known as the oldest one is because it was the first street that had a lot of traffic on it. Alright so we're currently here by Colon Street. <laughs> and I'm already experiencing all the madness. Go, let's go. Woo, so many people. This is quite intimidating. Yeah. Oh, and there's scooters to my right. I feel like a, a green light or a red light does not exist here in Cebu. You just go. Jeez, I thought Manila was bad, but this is already feeling 
like heavy busy. It's super, super busy. There are so many people here and so much traffic. And there's a McDonald's. Now usually busy places inside a city are always from the older street and this one is proving to be that exact definition. Wow, it almost feels like uh, the Tokyo of the Philippines from how busy it is. The minute the lights go off, everybody starts walking. Are you ready to go again? What's up? <laughs> Everyone's so friendly and greeting the camera. Hey! <laughs> this is such a busy street. <laughs> Hi! Hi! Let's go! <laughs> so we have been pronouncing the city's name as Cebu, but I've heard other people say Cebu. Which one is it? Is it Cebu or Cebu? We have asked a few locals around, but some are saying C and some are saying Su. So we don't really know and we hope we're saying it right. <laughs> There is actually so much happening on the street. I don't even know where to look. Left, right, forward, back. There's so many stores, so much going on. <laughs> There's even street food vendors on the side. Yeah. And just so many people and cars just driving back and forth. My goodness, <laughs> I have like a sensory overload right now. I have absolutely no idea where to walk. So this street used to be the shopping and business hub of Cebu. But wow, it is still crazy busy. There are shops just lining down the side everywhere. I just can't get over how busy it is. This spot doesn't even have a road. I don't know why that is, but there's no road on this spot. They're probably fixing it. Yeah, I can think it must be due to fixing. But the first thing that was going through my mind is that they decided not to pave this part and keep it what it was like 500 years ago. <laughs> but I doubt that is the case. That would be cool. <laughs> it's still continuing to blow our minds that the Philippines has got so much history and so much culture. I really enjoyed seeing the fort and the church today. But wow, I've also enjoyed seeing this crazy busy street. <laughs> yeah. So if you like this video, please give it a super thanks. Give it a like. And we'll see you in our next video for more Philippines adventures. Woo! <laughs>